Hello, I want to welcome you again to this class and I hope you're getting ready uh, and excited to start your first video on the intertestamental period. But as I do, um, I always want to mention to my classes um, that this is not a uh, church class, this is not a uh, Sunday school class, but this is an academic class. Uh, therefore, uh, we do not talk a lot about different stories out of the New Testament, but we do look at the books from an academic approach. Uh, but I want to make that very clear as we move through this class um, and hope that you enjoy this first video on the intertestamental period and then the videos throughout the rest of the semester. If you have any questions, as always, please email me. Have a great day. I want to welcome you to this first uh, session as we get started. I want to make uh, aware of a few things. Uh, and that is uh, to make sure that you have uh, the notes that go along with the video. Uh, also, if you are uh, watching the video and you need to pause it you know, to fill in the notes, uh, please do so. You rewind it, uh, listen to it again because I know it will be exciting. And uh, if you ever have questions, uh, please feel free to email me uh, at any time. So this first session is on what we call the intertestamental history. It's uh, about the occupation of Israel uh, all the way from Babylon to Rome. And as we go through this time, what we're looking at is what we call a theocentric view of history. And that is that every point in history is about the preparation and the, of the coming of Christ. Uh, Galatians tells us, uh, but when the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who are under the law and that we have re been received as an adoption of sons. And uh, I want to say that this is really a look at uh, God's history. Uh, we are going from the end of the Old Testament all the way to the beginning of the New Testament of the birth of Jesus Christ. And we're going to be looking at about 400 years of history. Now, uh, don't freak out on me just because I said we're going to be looking at 400 years of history. Uh, we're going to move kind of quickly. Uh, this is probably the uh, quickest uh, lecture that you will watch. But uh, once you understand that, make sure that you wrote down your notes somewhere that this is about 400 years of history. You will uh, most likely see that on a question somewhere. And we're really looking at eight stages of history. And I'm going to put these up here. Uh, we have the Babylonian period and the Persian period, uh, which actually start back in uh, the Old Testament. We have the Grecian period, the Ptolemaic period, the Syrian period, the Maccabean period, the Hasmonean period, and then finally the Roman Empire. And if you've ever taken a world uh, history class, uh, you've probably, a world civilizations class, you've maybe talked a little bit about the Babylonian, or the Persian, or even the Greek Empire, and most likely the Roman Empire. And so uh, those might be a little bit familiar to you if you've taken a world history class. And so uh, you might want to make note of these periods and uh, at least uh, some of the names and so that you, you are familiar with that. So as we begin, we're going to talk about the Babylonian period. Uh, this actually uh, goes back into the Old Testament. We're talking about uh, the time uh, at the end of the book of Kings uh, through some of the uh, prophets, especially into uh, Daniel. And during that time, we have what's a gentleman named Nebuchadnezzar. And Nebuchadnezzar uh, began the Babylonian period. He uh, took the, to the Israelites from Judah uh, back to Babylon, which is in uh, kind of what we call southern day uh, Iraq, and um, he began to rule uh, during this time. And uh, some of the events that came out of the Babylonian period were one, which, what is called the deportation. Now, 
the deportation is of the Jewish people. It's where they were uh, moved from uh, Jerusalem in uh, the area of Judah uh, to Babylon. And when they were deported, uh, was the development of what were called the synagogues. And the uh, synagogues were uh, kind of like we might think of a, of a church. It was uh, not the main place that they worshipped because that was the temple back in uh, Jerusalem. But the development of the synagogues allowed them to continue to their practice of worship uh, while they weren't able to be in the temple itself and uh, the law and the priests. And there was also the destruction of idolatry. And these were some lessons that they learned while they were in exile. Uh, idol worship was always a big part of uh, Jewish history. And so um, there was a movement to do away with idolatry. In 539 B.C., we have the fall of Babylon, and uh, that is an important date uh, when Sirius is proclaimed king of Babylon, and that moves us into the next period, which is called the Persian period. Now, in the Persian period, uh, we're talking about King Sirius. We're also looking at the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. If you uh, go back and read those books, uh, that's the time period. They're coming back out of captivity, uh, back into Jerusalem. Uh, and it brought about, uh, at the end of that time period, we bring about what's called the Persian defeat at the hands of the Greeks, uh, mainly uh, Philip of Macedonia. Uh, Macedonia is a part of the a northern Greek Peninsula. I will uh, show you a map in just a second. Uh, but during this time, uh, Greek was a fierce fighting machine. Uh, and then he died in 337 uh, BC. And I, again, I want to mention I am kind of moving kind of quickly through this time. Please don't uh, hesitate to, to pause to make sure that you're, you're caught up. Uh, but uh, this is just a, a real quick overview of. Uh, this 400-year history. And during the Greeks, we know of a famous Greek called Alexander the Great. And it's Alexander the Great that really expands the Greek Empire uh, during this time period. But he's actually prophesied about in Daniel chapter 8, uh, verses 5 through 8. And Daniel refers to him as what's called the He-Goat. Uh, he sees... Uh, this vision of these empires that will eventually be broken apart. Uh, but Daniel is, is seen into the, uh, God gives Daniel a vision of Alexander the Great that he will come into this area. Now, when Alexander the Great dies, um, his four generals uh, try to keep um, his empire together. Uh, but really all attempts fail, and it's broken up into four parts. And then uh, here is the map I was uh, talking about. So let me give us a little uh, geography lesson here. Uh, this is uh, modern-day Greece, uh, right over here where the uh, Cassander Empire was. Uh, this is the Macedonia region, starting up here in the pink. Uh, moving across, this is modern-day uh, Turkey, this would be uh, modern-day Syria, uh, Israel uh, is in this region, this is modern-day uh, North Africa, this would be Egypt, this is the Arabian Peninsula, Saudi Arabia, uh, modern-day Iraq is right here dirt in the area of the white with the Seleucus Empire. And so uh, the four generals break Alexander's empire into four parts, and it's really the Ptolemy Empire and the Seleucus Empire that will make the greatest impact in this region. Um, and so uh, we see those areas, and this is just kind of a little uh, quick geography session. The Ptolemaic period, uh, again, that's in uh, modern day uh, North Africa, uh, begins around 320 BC. And uh, I should have mentioned earlier, but if we look at the dates here, 
uh, in BC time, the larger the number right here, the further back in time, whereas the smaller the number, the closer to modern day history that we have. And every ruler in Egypt was given the name Ptolemy, even Julius Caesar, because there's a relationship to uh, Cleopatra. Uh, but in the city of Alexandria uh, was a great library and uh, was one of the best libraries uh, in the world, uh, containing many uh, scrolls and artifacts. Uh, but during this time, what we have is we have what's called the translation of the LXX. Uh, during this time, the Old Testament, uh, those books of the Old Testament, were translated into Greek. And the scholars that worked on it, uh, we call it the Septuagint. Um, and if you can uh, go and Google that, you can see more uh, about the Septuagint. But they translated it from uh, Hebrew into Greek for uh, that time period and those people to uh, better understand the Old Testament. And after uh, he is uh, defeated by uh, Anacostius III from Syria, we begin the Syrian period. And again, we are moving kind of quickly. But under the Syrians, uh, we have, they take control of this region. Uh, they begin uh, what I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, called the Sanhedrin. Uh, that's a Jewish court that uh, kind of rules. and uh, You see the Sanhedrin uh, during Jesus' trials uh, at the end of his life. And we also begin to bring back into this time period idol worship. Well, we have what's called the looting of the temple. That means that they brought in uh, idols into the temple. Uh, they destroyed it, not looting like taking things out but looting and bringing things in and defiling the temple, which uh, the temple was the center of Jewish worship. Uh, there was also what's called the sale of the high priest. Uh, if you had money, uh, you could buy yourself to be on the Sanhedrin. The high priest is the highest Jewish leader uh, in the land. He was the part one who would go into the temple to make the sacrifice and and so it was a very uh, immoral time, a uh, very corrupt time. Uh, we actually see this idea again of uh, the sale of church offices during uh, the Roman Catholic period prior to the Reformation where uh, priests and people could buy themselves to be a priest or a bishop or even the uh, Pope if you had the money and the connections to do so. There was an attempt to annex Egypt that failed. Uh, there is their... Uh, revolt and the reaction. The Jewish resistance really began to ramp up uh, because of mainly because of this defilement of the temple. Uh, the Maccabean, Maccabean period, excuse me, uh, comes about, uh, and really their desire is for independence. They want to go back to the way it was. They want their own independent state. They don't want to be ruled by outside forces. And so they begin to have a independence uh, cause. And there's a few more uh, Maccabeans uh, that come about into play. Uh, but when that ends, we bring into the next period, which is called the Hasmonean period. Now, the Hasmonean period, we see the rise of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, uh, again, they get their independence. Um, for at least a short period. And the Pharisees come on the scene. Uh, they are considered to be the spiritual fathers of the nation of Israel. Uh, we see them a lot in, the, in the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, as far as uh, that goes. And so um, these Pharisees uh, want to go back to the law. They believe in following the law. Uh, they're the ones that have the most interaction with Christ during his ministry. Uh, they believe that they were better than others. Whereas the Sadducees of right here believed that uh, there was no resurrection. They were elitist. But together, these two groups of people uh, ruled on what was called the Sanhedrin. 
uh, and the Sanhedrin is that high court. Uh, they make up the uh, what we might even call like a supreme court. Uh, they what they decided was uh, the law. And there were some different Hasmoneans that came about uh, again during this time. And at the end of the Hasmonean period, we begin the last section, which is the Roman Empire. Now, uh, Roman Empire was was great, was vast, uh, really kind of began uh, with one of the great ones, which you probably would recognize, which is Julius Caesar. Uh, and I'm going to put up some more. But here are some ones that you will actually see again when we look at the New Testament and the Gospels is Herod the Great. Herod the Great is the uh, ruler uh, during the time of the beginning of Jesus' life and his sons, uh, Herod Antipas uh, and Philip and Archelaus. During this time, uh, they are bringing about the rule of the Roman Empire into the nation of Israel. And in that time, uh, they developed what were called prefects. Now, the prefects were kind of governors. So we might think of the governor of the state of North Carolina. Uh, he rules his area the uh, same way with prefects. And some of the prefects uh, were not concerned about, except for this one right here, Pontius Pilate. Now, Pontius Pilate uh, ruled during the time of Jesus' life, and he's actually the one... We go to the end of the Gospels. Uh, Jesus is on trial before Pontius Pilate. Actually, he's on trial before him twice. And uh, he's the one that finally makes the statement to appease the crowds that I am innocent of the blood of this just man. And uh, then signs to send Jesus to the cross in order to basically to keep his office. Uh, after Pilate, again, I'm going to put a list up here. But there's really two that we'll see again in the book of Acts. And those are the two listed here in white. Uh, is Felix and Festus. They hold Paul in prison and uh, talk to him. Paul shares the gospel with them a lot. And uh, they too will pop back up again And uh, the time period. Uh, Agrippa uh, really about, but not as much as Felix and Festus. Now, out of the Roman Empire, we have a few things as we finish up this first lecture in time, is what we have what we call is the dispersion. That is the scattering of the Jews. Um, during times of tribulation within the nation of Israel, uh, the Jews uh, would scatter. Um, and even at the fall of Israel um, in AD 70, uh, there was a great dispersion. Uh, but that is a scattering. They would go other places. So when uh, we look at the book of Acts and we see uh, Paul developing these, seeing these Jewish communities outside of Israel is because they were scattered uh, long ago. Uh, Greek becomes the universal language, the New Testament written uh, mainly in Greek. Uh, we have the emergence of urban civilizations, more cities being developed, uh, the idea of Roman peace, that the Romans uh, rule. Uh, we have the development of roads. Uh, the Romans were great in developing a, a road system that would take it uh, far beyond uh, just the city of Rome, but helped with trade and uh, commerce and uh, travel throughout the Roman Empire, especially for their soldiers. And then what's called the prophecy of 70 weeks from Daniel, uh, which we'll talk about when we get to the uh, book of Revelation. And uh, this is the end of the first video session on the intertestamental period. Uh, please make sure that you've got your notes filled in, uh, that you're using the notes, guys. That's why they're there uh, to go along with the videos. Uh, if you have questions about something from the video, uh, please feel free to email me. And Make sure that you are doing your assignments uh, that are posted in Blackboard for this week.